and welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. Today we're going to be talking about a tragedy that happened in Orlando, Florida at the Pulse nightclub. And we're going to be talking about rebounding after the tragedy. Our guest today is Gary Kulik, who has been on before, and we are so very happy to catch him before he's starting his new endeavor, graduate school. Welcome, Gary, to, a, to a, the <laughs> Commons Roundtable. I want to just, um, before we start, I want to read something that I think is very important, and we will then discuss it. It's by journalist Milo Todd, and he said, in every hate crime, every homicide, every attack, and every bit of harassment that makes us fear the violence that could be coming next. It's these moments every day that assures us that our community is not safe. Because it's not over, it's never over, we deal with this kind of fear and hate on a daily basis. It's just that the pulse was so bad and so atrocious on such a direct scale of attention that it actually made the news. What do you think about that, Gary? That, you know, finally something that, you know, and I know that um, you were, in fact, I want to tell our viewers, viewers something that's very important. Um, and that is that Gary, several weeks before the Pulse nightclub uh, in Orlando, the tragedy, Gary himself was at the nightclub a couple of weeks before that. And um, we're so happy that you're safe and that you're here, knock on wood, nothing ever happened to you. But I know you had friends there and the tragedy is still there for you and your friends. Yes, uh, this tragedy hit very close to home for me because Orlando at one point was my home for about a good five months when I was interning at Disney. Um, and so, Pulse was a nightclub that I would go to frequently with a few friends and I decided to take a trip down there about three weeks before the incident and I did visit Pulse nightclub and I was absolutely shocked to hear the news and just completely heartbroken. I personally did not know anyone that um, passed away from the tragedy. However, I had a friend that knew about four people that passed away so it was it, still very just very an emotion, very emotional week for me and many others that I knew. So, and and I and I know you mentioned when you do go to clubs nowadays, there there's still an aftermath of that. It's still a feeling of you just don't feel comfortable yet because you never know what's going to happen next. I, like a copycat or something that could happen here in Chicago. It could be happen. I know you're going to California to start your, you know, your master's program. What, what are your, what are your feelings about that? I mean, I think in general people should, you know, be cautious. Be cautious of your surroundings. Make sure, make sure you're making good decisions. Make sure, be aware of, you know, just in case something hypothetically happens. What safety precautions can you take? Is there, you know, a, an accessible emergency exit? Um, you know, it, I think this entire issue brought attention to a lot of people, and and you know, it. Some of it, I feel like, is a little bit of paranoia on one spectrum because you know, before people maybe weren't as paranoid, but now, you know, I feel like pe some people are a little bit more paranoid almost, and are taking precautions that they maybe didn't take. Per before, um, whether they're necessary or not, I don't know. But I, you know, to me, it, it never hurts to play it safe and and to defend yourself. And you know, if you feel comfortable bringing some pepper spray with you or, or bringing even a knife with you, I, do it. Do what makes you feel comfortable. Um, I'd say for the first week, I, I, I kind of just it was hard. I didn't feel safe going out. I, I you know, I, 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 I thought maybe maybe I should just not go and participate in the pride events that were going on in Chicago. But there was this little voice in my head that said, No, don't don't do that. Go out there, live your life, don't live in fear. And I so I decided to go out and everything was fine. But, you know, 
it goes to show you the impact that this whole thing had on me and my, and my thinking. Um, it really did impact it, and I, I did feel a little insecure for about a, a week or so. You know, one of the things that I know that the Pulse nightclub didn't do, and you really have to, and I think I mentioned to you when we were eating at the Bluegrass today, that what was really uh, important is to, when you go to a, a club, or you, it, I know when you're on an airplane, you always, I always know the flight attendants say to check your exits, where your exits are. When you, I know when I'm in a theater, a lot of times a little blurb comes on, know your exits. And uh, one of the things that happened that I know about the Pulse nightclub, the exit was not open. In fact, it was padlocked, the one in the back. They did not have an opening. Uh, and that's why a lot of the tragedy, people couldn't get out. And I think the fire department or whoever was there, the police, they had to break that open because it was locked. And I think that is very important. And I mentioned to you, when you go to a club, you know, uh, just go, you know, you, you know where the front exit is, but go into the club, go through the club, and make sure that exit is where, you, where it is and when it's open. You might have to make sure that it can open for you. And if it's not open and it's locked, I would tell the management to open the, the back door. Wow. No, I can't even believe that that, that that was even allowed. You know, I mean, that to me, that's just completely unacceptable. And I'm surprised that they would even do that uh, you know for me like I I've noticed you know I when I do walk into bars I kind of look at my surroundings and I think you know before there wasn't as much of a reason to be aware and to to to, to you know to kind of observe and look at your surroundings but I think now after such a tragedy people are now making sure that they are aware they 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 know what you know where their exits are, what precautions they need to take, and I think even people have, you know, started purchasing guns of their own to defend themselves, just in case, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with defending yourself or, you know, making sure that you can defend yourself, and especially, you know, after such a, a tragedy like this. Yeah, because one of the, the writers of one of these papers, um, uh, was talking about the very thing that they said the political correctness coming out of the left and their ability to blame gun owners instead of radical jihadists infuriated other gay men who said it, you know, and it infuriated some people because, you know, it's it, not just to blame it on guns. In fact, guns, you know, uh, you know, when you ban guns, I mean, it's the correct people that, uh, you know, they already know it. It's, and a lot of these people, they're terrorists, they can buy guns, you know, in the black market, they can buy guns from, um, you know, from, uh, the, from um, so many different sources. And, um, you know, uh, so, you know, if you have the money, you can get it. Uh, but do you think that you would feel safe? Do you think that more um, gay uh, men and women um, will be carrying guns or protection? Uh, this, has this been something that they've been talking about? Because, I, you know, in the, the gay community, you know, there's a lot of, um, well, there's a lot of homophobia out there. And there's a lot of Islamophobia going on. What do you what do you feel about it? I feel if people think that it's necessary to take such an action, purchase a gun in order to feel safe, then do what you feel is best for you. For me, I don't think it's necessary to take that measure. Um, after the incident, um, in response, there was a lot of posters being posted around West Hollywood in California um, with a with their slogan being hashtag shoot back, which basically means feel free to purchase a gun and defend yourself. Um, and I think some people felt it was necessary to take that measure, or you know, if it wasn't necessary, now it would be after such a thing. Uh, and I, you know, I personally think you know what, what set this mass shooting aside uh, and, and made it differentiate from the other mass shootings was I think people felt like it was an attack specifically on you know a minority group, minority group being the LGBT community, and therefore I feel like people in the LGBT community felt it was necessary to retaliate, and their way of retaliating was to 
maybe, you know, if not be more aware, find a way to defend themselves just in case another attack like this could happen. God forbid, you know, knock on wood. But it can happen. Yeah, because the, uh, you know, what, what, it, what actually they felt that the uh, perpetrator um, who was um, Omar Mateen, um, and he, you know, he was even, uh, on his phone, they found on a smartphone, they did see Pulse Orlando and shooting, the word shooting, Pulse Orlando and shooting on his smartphone that the investigators found. And as it turned out that this individual uh, also, who was married and had a child, um, was was possibly gay, that he was homosexual. But in his community, you know, where he came from, in the Middle Eastern community, it is a sin to be gay. So what, you know, what do you feel about that? And then they, they stone gays, they throw them over buildings in the Middle East, Eastern countries. Um, and he, he was, a fr I don't know, he, he just couldn't come out because of, uh, you know, uh, be, because he would be stoned or, I mean, he would be, his family would, would completely disown him. And so he got married. And yet at the same time, he goes and shoots the very community that he really is part of because they said that he possibly frequented the nightclub uh, maybe a couple of times prior to, you know, the, the shooting, the massacre. Um, I, I heard multiple things. Now, I, was that confirmed that he actually visited the nightclub a lot? Yeah, they, it was they, they, they said they, they people said that they saw him. I'm sure okay. that he had to be there to look at the, you know, if you're going to shoot something or if you're going to destroy something, you want to be there mm -hmm. just to check it out and where everything is ahead of time. I mean, I, you know, I'm trying to think of, a, to get into the terrorist's mind, I'm, you're not going to go into something without knowing you know, where the exits right. and where everything is ahead of time. So obviously he was there once before. Maybe other people thought that he, they saw him at other times. Uh, so I, you know, if, if in fact this is true and, and he, he was in fact a closeted homosexual who, who didn't feel like he could accept himself because of whether it was his family background or religious background, I feel like this is definitely you know, a, a case of internalized homophobia. I mean, that's, that is what I would call it. Um, really someone who feels, you know, that they, they couldn't be themselves or be accepted. And I, I just feel like there was probably a lot of emotional issues from, from, you know, not being able to embrace himself or be around people that would embrace him for who he was. And, um, I mean, he obviously suffered probably, I would imagine, from some sort of mental illnesses and probably if, if it was, like I said, from internalized, you know, internalized homophobia, I feel like stems from not being able to accept who you are. And you probably, you know, build up all this anger and I guess for some reason he felt, found it necessary to retaliate and attack the community in which he could have been a part of, but unfortunately was not able to you know. And it could have been accepted yeah. by the community as well because uh, the, that community is very accepting Absolutely. of Absolutely. Oh, there's so much support in the community, really. I mean, I, I personally felt very supported by the community when I first came out and, and saw how, you know, how embracing everyone was. Um, but so it's a pity and a shame that he, he couldn't do that for himself. Because of his, his parents' religious and his religious background, uh, that wouldn't allow him to, he almost like shot the very thing that he was of. And he was sh trying to, sh you know, to destroy himself and destroying others, you know, of that, of, you know, of his gender. And um, so that was very interesting uh, that he did something like that. Do you ever feel like the, that the community gets bullied a lot? And what's going on, you know, as far as in, uh, Islamophobia and